Welcome to the Bible in the News. This week saw the re-election of Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Haaretz, Israel's leftist newspaper, ran the headline, Netanyahu's Magic Act, and had the following to say. No one expected this election's startling drama. Certainly no one envisioned the numbers that have emerged, not the pollsters who need to thoroughly re-examine their conclusions, nor the polished political players who painted a completely contradictory reality from the one that arose Wednesday morning. Not even the veteran analysts could translate their experience in seniority into more accurate figures. The truth is that not even sworn optimists among Likud supporters could have predicted the election results. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu can say Wednesday morning what Menachem Begin said when he rose from his sickbed on the eve of his surprising 1977 election victory. I have been resurrected, end quote. Netanyahu has undergone a massive media assault, has Haaretz conceded. This amazing achievement is mainly a personal one for Netanyahu. He endured massive attacks in the press in recent months and not only survived them, but apparently was boosted by them. Well, to the world, Netanyahu's victory is magic because it, is, it was not expected, especially with all the negative media he was receiving. Obama certainly didn't want him to win. Well, what the world and its politicians, media spin doctors, and public opinion manipulators fail to understand is a fundamental biblical principle. It comes from Daniel 4, verse 17. We read, This matter is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basest of men. End quote. So while forces of mankind go through all kinds of contortions to swing power into their hands, the angels are at work. When God decrees the path of human history, mankind is powerless to prevent his will being accomplished. We read in Isaiah 55 verse 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Well, it is the angels that are the kingmakers, not the media, not the opinion polls, and not the politicians. We read in Zechariah 4 verse 10 about the angels. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro throughout the whole earth. The Jerusalem Post reported voter turnout was the highest since 1999. After the polls closed on Tuesday night in the election for the 20th Knesset, the Central Elections Committee reported voter turnout at 71.8%, the highest turnout since 1999, and 4.1% more than the last election in 2013. End quote. As exit polls came in, Netanyahu declared victory to his supporters at his election night headquarters. He said, Against all odds, we have achieved, achieved a great victory for the Likud. I am proud of the people of Israel, who in the moment of truth knew how to distinguish between what is important and what is peripheral, and to insist on what is important. Haaretz reported, Netanyahu will be prime minister for the fourth time, the third time in a row. Only David Ben-Gurion's accomplished this before him. And if Netanyahu serves a full term, he will surpass Ben-Gurion as the country's longest-running premier. End quote. However, forming a government in Israel is not as easy as winning the most seats in the election. There are 120 seats in the Israeli Knesset, their parliament, and the one to be successful will have to cobble a government together from the different fractured factions that make up the political landscape. Canada's National Post reported, with nearly all votes counted, Likud appeared to have earned 30 of the Parliament's 120 seats and was in a position to build with relative ease a coalition government with its nationalist, religious, and ultra-Orthodox Jewish allies. End quote. Well, nothing is certain in Israel. When the Kadima party, headed by Zippy Livni, won the 2009 election with 28 seats, it failed to form a coalition, and the Likud ended up being the ruling party led by Netanyahu. The Jerusalem Post reported, 
The Premier said that he had already spoken with the heads of parties that he plans to invite into his coalition, including Beit Yehuda chief Naftali Bennett, Kaluna's Moshi Kalon, Yisrael Netanyahu head Avigdor Lieberman, Shas leader Aria Deray, and United Torah Judaism representatives Yaakov Litzman and Moshi Gaffney. The Prime Minister plans to immediately begin forming a government in order to complete the task within two or three weeks. End quote. While we wait to see the political alliance that will be sewn together, what is perhaps the most significant in this election is the swing toward the right by the Prime Minister to secure his return to power. Aaron Sheva reported Netanyahu vowed not to allow a Palestinian state to be founded in Israel during his watch, as opposed to labor head Yitzhak Herzog, who previously re revealed he intended to divide Jerusalem in establishing such a state. Netanyahu told Aaron Sheva that he had changed his position from the 2009 Bar Elan speech, in which he declared support for establishing a Palestinian state. Netanyahu cited a change in the realities in the Middle East as being behind his shift, end quote. Well, Netanyahu's announcement of no longer supporting the establishment of a two-state solution came on Monday night, two days before the election. This move, whatever political motives may have prompted it, starts a new era in Israeli politics if Netanyahu forms a government. Canada's National Post reported, Netanyahu, who already has a testy relationship with President Barack Obama, took a sharp turn to the right in the final days of the campaign, staking out a series of hardline positions that will put him on a collision course with much of the international community. In a dramatic policy reversal, he said he now opposes the creation of a Palestinian state, a key policy of the White House and the international community. He also promised to expand construction in Jewish areas of East Jerusalem, the section of the city claimed by the Palestinians as their capital. End quote. Well, many Israeli governments have toyed with the idea of disengagement over the years, with the Kadima party, led by the now disgraced Ehud Olmert, pulling out of the Gush Katif bloc in a disastrous attempt to sell land for peace. The two-state solution is completely unworkable, but has been the only option imposed by outside forces such as Europe and America as the roadmap leading forward. It has proven to be a roadmap to a dead end, fraught with mines. And now Netanyahu will have to visibly take Israel on a new path. What that path looks like remains to be seen. In the days immediately following the election, Netanyahu clarified his position in an interview with NBC's Andrea Mitchell. He said, I haven't changed my policy. I don't want a one-state solution. I want a sustainable, peaceful two-state solution, but for that, circumstances have to change. But Mitchell went on to question Netanyahu. Certainly, Israeli voters, your supporters, believe you were re-elected on a mandate against a two-state solution. That is the way the White House is interpreting it. They're strongly considering not blocking a vote for statehood for Palestinians. Well, first of all, that state would become a, a, a terror. Netanyahu went on to answer very forthrightly. Well, first of all, that state would become a, a, a terror state. So we need the conditions of recognition of a Jewish state and real security in order to have a realistic two-state solution. Well, Obama's reaction is concerning for many. In his article entitled White House Rethinking Israel Ties, Peace Process Rules, Neil MacDonald of CBC News had the following to say. Repeatedly, President Obama's aptly named spokesman, John Ernest, told reporters Thursday the U.S. is rethinking and reevaluating and reconsidering its decades-long unwavering support of a negotiated solution for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The days of Washington automatically supporting Israel at the U.N., striving to protect it from international isolation, may be over. That foundation has eroded, said Ernest. It means that our policy decision needs to be reconsidered. The president's spokesperson was happy to provide everyone with the reason for America's change of heart. Benjamin Netanyahu's pre-election declaration earlier this week that shattered finally the idea of the peace process. I use quotation marks deliberately. The peace process has been a fiction for many years, if it was ever real at all. But 
It was a fiction nearly everyone had an interest in perpetrating, he said. Negotiations leading to two states living side by side in peace and security. For the record, Ernest repeats, repeated America's abiding support for that ultimate objective Thursday. But he added, now her ally in these talks has said that they are no longer committed to that solution. End quote. So the loss of American support, while seemingly catastrophic, may be necessary as a coming-of-age step for the state of Israel. It, was, it found itself increasingly moving towards a quiet diplomatic relationship with the Arab states with whom it shares common enemies such as Saudi Arabia. The Center for Research on Globalization posted an article on Thursday which said a recent report by an Israeli TV station revealed that Saudi Arabia would allow Israeli jets to use its airspace to attack Iran, demonstrating the clandestine strategic allegiance or alliance between Saudi Arabia and Israel. As the Times of Israel reported in an article entitled Saudis would let Israeli jets use their airspace to attack Iran, the article stated the Saudis have declared their readiness for an Israeli air force to overfly Saudi airspace en route to attack Iran if an attack is necessary. The TV report from Channel 2 said, All that they ask is some kind of progress on the Palestinian issue. Being able to use Saudi airspace would allow Israeli planes a shortcut to reach Iran without having to fly around the Persian Gulf, taking up precious time and fuel. End quote. While we know the relationship between Israel and Saudi Arabia must improve as the prophet Ezekiel lists Saudi Arabia amongst the list of those who protest in the latter days. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil? Ezekiel 38 verse 13. Well, Saudi Arabia and Yemen contain the area of ancient Sheba. Once again, the angels are at work moving the pieces on the chessboard in accordance with the plan laid out in the ancient prophecies. Well, regardless of Obama's protests, we are told the end of the story in the prophets. Israel will be firmly planted in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, the mountains of Israel. This is sure and firm because the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. It is against these areas that the forces of the Gentiles will come in the latter days and will be destroyed on the mountains of Israel when Messiah intervenes and reestablishes the kingdom of Israel. The prophet Zechariah records the invasion, temporary success, and then the destruction of these nations. We read in chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. The prophet Joel also records the same. We read in Joel chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, For behold, in those days and in that time, when I bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations, and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people, for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Well, the prophet Ezekiel pinpoints the mountains of Israel as the flashpoint. In chapter 38, verse 8, we read, After many days thou shalt be visited, in the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, and shall be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Well, this is not a successful campaign, but a resounding final defeat for the anti-Semitic powers of Europe, when God will sanctify himself before all nations. Because we read in verse 16, Thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know when I shall be sanctified in thee, O Gog, before their eyes. 
God will respond to their arrogance. We read in verse 18, It shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. And he will intervene and bring divine judgment upon these nations. Because we read in verse 21 to 23, I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. And I will plead against him with pestilence and blood and with rain and will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him an overflowing hail and great hailstone, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know that I am the Lord. So we can expect to see the further development of Israel upon the mountains of Israel because this is what the mouth of the Lord hath spoken. It is his land and he has given it to his people and all nations will learn this eventually. For the Bible in the news, this has been Jonathan Bowen joining you.